Welcome to the Hermitus Podcast with Andrea Cox, the only plant-based astrology podcast focusing on hermetic principles, cellular detoxification, and mystery teachings. Andrea's interviews include her celebrity clients, NBA ball players, musical composers, detoxification specialists, and world-renowned healers just like Andrea. Andrea is a model-turned-celebrity detox specialist, intuitive healer, and holistic wellness and life coach. You will find only authentic people interviewed on this podcast. Real recognizes real. Andrea prides herself on only inviting those who are uniquely creative. Hello, everyone. This is Andrea Cox with the Hermetis Podcast. Thank you so much for being on this episode. Today, I have Dan McDonald. Dan with the master plan, the life regenerator. He looks like Jesus today. He was shirtless when we first got on here. And Dan is amazing. Dan has taught millions of people how to detox on a cellular level. Uh, he started juicing years ago in, in front of his trailer that he lived in with his girlfriend. And yeah, he's got over 300 and some thousand followers on YouTube. How many followers do you have now on YouTube, Dan? Uh, 371,552 the last time I looked. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. Wow. I bet you have like 10 million views or something. Have you ever looked at that? Probably more like 50. 50 million. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm so slow. I have 4 million views, but I'm, I'm like at that low, like 20 some thousand subscribers on that channel. So, but I have another channel. So, so I'm really excited that we have you, Dan, because we recorded like a two hour interview the other day. And as, as, as luck would have it, I, I ended the recording wrong and we erased it. But since then, you put something out that has me completely captivated, completely mesmerized and, and wanting to talk about it. So I'm going to start with a video you shared today of your apartment and how you're, you're kind of a minimalist. I mean, you have all like the, the healthy gadgets, but it, it's pretty minimal. And I was thoroughly impressed with that as my, my North node is a North node of someone that needs to get rid of material things. And I just, I, I'm thinking of having you come out and help me throw away all my stuff. Now, how, how did you get to that point? Were you always a minimalist? People have actually hired to come and clean out their pantry and their refrigerator before, you know, so it's wow. a lot of fun because I just toss away everything. What isn't junk? The fresh fruits and vegetables you bought within the last three days. Everything else goes in the trash. Now that's not entirely true. There's some olives and, you know, the only spice I have in there is cumin. Um, and that's the only condiment that I have. And why do you use cumin? Why is it your favorite spice? I know, but let's tell them why it's your favorite. It's just, I just, it's just uh, I was making this recipe and I bought it just for the recipe, you know? Um, and I still do, I still will make Mexican style flavored salsas and guacamoles, but I'll use essential oils. I have all the essential oils, herbs, and I'll just put a couple of drops. Yeah. yeah. And so I think everybody was stoked about that video. I didn't really think much of it, um, but they were, everyone kind of said the same thing as you. I never thought anything of it. I just, I don't like clutter and I don't like the energy to be all wonky and i don't like to have more crap than i need because it messes up the vibe you know and so it's just and plus i've moved so many times that um you know i just decided this time to not buy any more stuff and i have to force myself to not buy anything that i don't absolutely need you know yeah well as someone who I think I paid close to 20,000 from a move to California to here a little over a year ago and, and a lot of money to have my stuff shipped from Ohio to California before that. What I saw when I watched that video was freedom. Like that's what it said to me. It's freedom to be able to pick up and go at any moment. And it actually woke something up in me. I lived the way you lived about 
a long, long time ago when I was about 25, I had an apartment with one, one couch, a mattress on the floor, and uh, a Rife machine next to my bed. And that was pretty much it. I think I had a water purifier, a Kangen system, and that was it. And so seeing that, I really, uh, I'm really drawn to that in you. I'm really like vibing well with that. Now, I asked you the other day, I asked you some, some questions. So I want to kind of retrace that a little bit. What, what have you eaten today? Like, how do you start your day? I know you said water with honey. And um, I think a lot of people will be surprised to know that you eat honey. I'm a vegan. It sounds like, or a vegan. It sounds like you're a vegan. Uh, so tell me what, how do you start your day? You wake up around what time? Today, I actually, well, I woke up at 1130 last night. I went to bed at 730 and woke up at 1130 last night and just laid in bed and just prayed. And uh, I was on a, I was just so high energy because I've been on point lately and also kind of wound up from the whole sale and videos and people and energy. Normally, I'm pretty much just in my little box. You saw my video. I have three different places to meditate in my house. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what any moment that I get, if I'm not making a video, exercising, doing yoga, I'm meditating, you know, just sitting and being. And so, but now I'm kind of buzzed out, but I just basically woke up around 1130 last night and then just laid there all morning, just praying and dipping in and out of like fantasizing and then trying to bring it back to God and it's kind of this dance between dreaming of worldly pleasures and then diving back into the silence. And I keep trying to get it back into the source self because I find that that brings me more happiness throughout the day. And I don't need those worldly pleasures because I've got the inner worldly peace. And so my that's just my thing is because the mind will go outwards, obviously, because it's trained and programmed after billions of years of biological evolution. And now we've got society with all its conditioning. And so it can be tough to, to turn it around and bring it back to the inward journey. And that's what I did basically up until about five, where I popped up and then I did my meditation from five to six. And then I had a consult from six to seven. And then I made some juice and made a video. I normally, don't make videos in the morning, but I was already so awake. Um, Cause normally, you know how, you know, it's just like you wake up and you're not quite ready to be on camera, but I just felt so good. So I made a video and I I'm made- I'm always on, Dan, I'm always ready. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> just... I'm, I'm, I usually like to wake up and smack myself, have a juice, do yoga, get some blood pumping, get some blood moving through to the skin and then, hi everyone, you know. But I was just awake and in a good mood. And so I just filmed a video this morning. I made cucumber juice. And so I, I started the day today with a uh, with the heal all juice or the beauty juice, which is apple, carrot, ginger, celery, cucumber, lemon. And I think I got it all in there. And then I drank a quart of that in the bath. And then I headed out to yoga and then I took the cucumber juice and a quart of water. So I've had a quart of water, uh, a quart of beauty juice, a quart of cucumber juice, and a quart of cellulite melter, which is uh, the mixture of all the citrus. And I took a bunch of herbs with that. So it's about what, almost four o'clock and it's been a liquid, liquid, liquid all day. And then I had a, I made a video where I talked about the um, obliteration of the biofilms using the herbs and the juicing and the fasting and all the other good stuff. And I made a microbiome salad and I kept that and I put that in the fridge and that's what I'll have tonight is the microbiome salad. Nice. Um, Mushy, you're going to have to edit this out. So he's up in the right hand corner and I noticed I'm looking at him the whole time. So it's going to look to people like I'm looking at myself. I'm actually looking at him. So I'm going to stare straight ahead, like at a circle on my computer and just talk because he's not on top of me, which is where he needs to be. 
<laughs> he needs to be on top of me. She'll edit this out. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah, so I don't know how to get him on top of me. <laughs> So that you, so that your eyes so are looking. actually looking straight instead of because you're up here. So I'm looking like this the whole time, and I I realize that that's not going to look good. What you do is you look at the lens if you want to do that. If I look straight. I have to look at me, and I don't like to look at myself. So, um, so but I'll look at myself. Okay, so you'll just have to edit that little part out. Um, so. So Dan, I, uh, I, I want to talk about the meditation because I think we spoke about before, I'm more of like a yoga, like that's my moving meditation, like breath with movement is, is how I feel like I really get in touch with God and source my higher self. Also, I do do a meditation and a prayer, but it's to my ancestors. So how did you get into meditation? Do you use a, a mantra, like a word that you say over and over again? How long do you meditate every day? I think a lot of people will be really interested in hearing about that. Yeah, because it's in my experience, it's one of the best things, if not the best. It's kind of like, is it the live foods, the celibacy or the meditation? But in this experience, the meditation has been absolutely essential to regenerate a degenerated brain coming from a mother that was you know not living properly during gestation and then a popped out rough childhood so all funky brain and nerve regeneration has been my thing and so the meditation has been essential along with many other um what people would probably call biohacking i wouldn't call it that i would call it more alignment with the laws of life and also just um, utilizing these mechanisms and neuroplasticity and detoxification and other different types of therapies to enhance the quality of the brain and the nerves. But the meditation has been one of the most profound things. And I started about 22 years ago. So everything started at the same time. I was a homeless, drug addicted, alcoholic, cigarette smoking, uh, you know, burgers, beer, women, whiskey, cocaine, alcohol. I think there's a song about you. I think there's, <laughs> I think there's a few, yeah. And yeah, but it, mine would be more like, wow, this guy really wrote the song, you know. But then one day, like I told you, and I've told the story before, because it's kind of a unique story to just be an alcoholic drunk, walking down the street, totally wasted, and walk into a spiritual bookstore. And then the dude in there, I'm walking around, just trying to get out of the rain. It's pouring down rain and blustering like crazy, which is okay. In Seattle, it rains, you get wet. But this was like storming like buckets and i'm like okay i gotta get in here and just chill out until this thing passes by so i went into this bookstore never been in a spiritual bookstore in my life and the dude just looked at me and he goes you want to know the real truth and i was just like yes so he hands me this one dollar pamphlet i took it put it in my jacket and then i went and I read that thing and it just completely transformed my life. It was about raw foods, fasting, celibacy, and meditation, all in one book. Who was it by? Edmund Bordeaux Skelly. Okay. Yeah. Right and on. He, did, he it was it was one of the hundreds or millions of books that are, you know, imprisoned in the archives at the Vatican. He actually stole it out of there. <laughs> He said, this is too important to be stuck in here where only the Catholic priests can have access to this information when the world needs this. But the Vatican, they like to keep all that information for themselves to put a magic spell on all the people so that we're dumbed down and cannot use the magic of God's truths that were written down by the sages that were way more tapped in. Us nowadays, we're like, well, I sort of have a pineal gland. You know, we're like so dumbed down from the fluoride and the food that we don't connect anymore or write anything down and have these experiences. So that was the day that changed my life. I did a complete 180. I, I just was a, I was an alcoholic, drug addict, homeless bodybuilder, 
um, going to the YMCA to lift weights. And then I actually lived at the YMCA. I actually cleaned their windows so that they would just turn the other way. They gave me a free membership. I had it. I was kind of the life regenerator of the homeless people. I was always keeping everybody. Hold on. Let me talk to the cops. You know, uh, officer, we're high as hell, but we don't have any drugs on us right now. I'm on two hits of LSD and your face is melting, but my <laughs> friends, we have, none of us have any drugs. We left them all at home, you know, and I was just that kind of guy that was just like always kind of like the voice of reason, but I was always trying to destroy my oh, high. Just, your face is oh, dude. And it really was. And it was funny because this cop was prejudiced. I mean, because his, his partner told me, sorry. And my, after the, he left, he goes, I'm sorry. My partner hates white dudes with long hair, you know? And I'm like, okay, it's cool, man. Whatever. And he's like, go have fun, bro. You know? <laughs> and he had to respect his partner. I respected him. But this big black cop was like, I could tell he's like looking for something, you know, that, just he wanted to just bust me, but I was too honest. So anyways, I know how to not get busted. I got busted enough times. I spent quite a bit of time in the clinker, but uh, I, eventually I woke up, I slow down. Cause the stories are, they go on and on forever. It's like, how did you learn to meditate in prison? You know what I'm saying? So it's just, uh, it's crazy. You know, I found Jesus in prison for the second time. You know what I mean? The first time was on a Sesame street bus. Okay. So Jesus has been watching over me the whole time. So I love, um, I, I lost my train of thought because you made me laugh so hard. When you <laughs> train of thought. Go on and on forever. That's why they call me the life regenerator. Baby. My face actually hurts. I laugh so hard, but, but no, up. like I, I really want to know this because I, I think our paths are similar. We were both into bodybuilding. I too found a book that changed my life, flew out to New York to meet the author, but learned that her, colon hydrotherapist that was very, very humble, Gil Jacobs, was the true light. And I always find that the people that really know the truth, the ones that are are really, really carrying the knowledge, they are very humble. They are very, you know, they do live a very minimalistic lifestyle. They don't have a lot of stuff around. And I think, you know, that has to, to do a lot with your astrology, your north node, you know, if you have a Taurus South node, you know, you come from luxury and have a lot of things and you have to purge as, you know, as time goes on. But, uh, you know, why do you think that they keep these things hidden? Because I have my own personal thoughts. I mean, I think that, you know, the Illuminati exists. I think I've had my own experience with that in my lifetime and, you know, a few years ago and i feel like a lot of things are kind of kept under wraps to keep people down whether it's people you know tinkering with engineering systems to mess with people's money or population elimination you know the the, the survival of of the fittest and who can get the you know what and all that why do you think they keep that information hidden just to kind of keep everybody in place to keep everybody in check well, imagine a world full of people like me who cannot be controlled. Ditto. Who is totally free. Ditto. Just traveling through with this thing right now, but completely free, you know, because I know what I am, you know, I know what we all are, but everyone has to come to that realization themselves, you know, and then those people that realize that are the ones that are humble because when you know your own self as divine intelligence, there's nothing to know and there's no proving anything right or wrong, good or bad. Um, and so then you really come to the terms with there's nothing to really know. In fact, the less you know, or the less you think you know, the better. You can just be a blank slate. Then you enter into that childlike state of just, hey, I'll go for a walk, you know, and you don't have anything to prove. Uh, you don't have, you don't really want anything because you have the childlike inner joy of just the aliveness. That's the treasure. And so then you do want to keep your possessions at a minimum so that they don't possess you because yeah. we have these cars and houses and mortgages and bills. And so our, our income is whatever, five, 10 grand a month. Our income is five grand a month and our nut is $4,998 a month. So we got two, do a $2 cushion. You know, so of course, you know, if you make five grand, your nuts should be about two or 2,500. See what I'm saying? 
and you should live way below your means so you ain't tripping because then you lose the treasure of peace because it is easier for a rich man what's important in life too to get, or it's easier for a camel to pass through a, the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven meaning when you have a lot of crap to worry about you have no peace and if you have no peace you do not have the kingdom of heaven God, this is this is so good. I'm so happy that I accidentally deleted the first one because what you're talking about is um, is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. With I know we've had a lot of conversations over the years and and recently, and I know I mentioned something in private to you about a piece of land and my own water source and things of that nature. And what do you feel about homesteading and things like that? So you don't think people should own their own property and have a piece of land and be growing their own food and and have their own water source or or you don't you don't think that, right? No, I don't think they should. I think everyone should do what they're called to do. Mm -hmm. um, I am probably an overcomer. In, in other words, I'm just, I have a white robe and I walk around and if I have a nice place to sleep, I sleep. If I don't, I don't. Someone hands me some white rice, I eat it. If I don't, I fast. You know, just that kind of, I think that's what's happening to me. I'm like, you know, I don't really, I'm not asking for it, but whatever it wants to do. But I think that there should be homesteads. I think that there should be communal living. The problem is, is most human beings are not able to get into the fifth dimension where love reigns supreme. They're in the fourth dimension and then they have the second, third or fourth and they have all these intellectual battles or emotional battles and no one can yield. But in the fifth dimension, especially at like consciousness level 540 unconditional love, you just let everybody else win, you know? But you do, if you, that's why it's good to have like a guru at the ashram because he's not gonna deviate. Now, some of these gurus, they start sleeping with all the, little devotees and stuff that's low level super chump cheap control them by manipulating systems to make sure no one has them. It's not one thing them. Guru yeah. to have a woman to help him to be a helpmate on earth mm -hmm. it's another thing to be sleeping with all your little devotees and stuff that's pretty low level that happens to a lot of guys i'm talking about like somebody to hold down the fort someone to anchor in the energy whether it's a household um whether it's a community whether it's a homestead somebody to say you know to kind of have the final say energetically so that the field stays within integrity otherwise everyone's arguing it becomes about money and then you lose that's why the Essene communities back in the day there aren't really any today children of the light but i am one of those um but we're not we don't have the communities i wish we did because we would grow food, we would share it, we would be equal, and we would be, you know, everyone would have their roles. There would be the teachers, there would be the scribes, there would be the gardeners, but everyone would pick up the spade and we would all work in the sun, in the garden of the brotherhood and the sisterhood of light to, you know, supply each other and we would work together, you know, to create a community that would thrive. I and it would be minimal effort for maximum but it's about being intelligent and, and aligning ourselves with the laws of life i think there are a few places starting like that i know that in atlanta there's one that just sprouted up in texas there's one but you, you kind of you, you it's almost like people have to have their brains looked into at the door because you never know who hasn't processed their their, their childhood trauma their past life trauma and they're not going to like lose it because they're not in control or something right so that's interesting we talked a little bit about so so you eat a, a a clean raw food diet and you're vegan and i we talked a little bit about why we were we were vegan plant-based i've been vegan 23 years and i asked how you felt about animals and i know for me Dan, like the animal component came in later about six and a half years in. And I know this is different for you. And I want you to elaborate on this because I think it's important. And I personally think this has to do with one's astrological placements and the cleanliness level of their body, their sensitivity to animals. Um, 
I know I went vegan for shallow purposes. I saw a woman that looked, you know, 15 years younger than she was. I was like, I want that. I went plant-based. I was a fitness model, went raw vegan overnight, 100% raw for 11 and a half years. I wouldn't even drink tea. And then about six years in, the veganism became about the animals. I learned about what was happening to the animals and I was just being an animal lover, always having rescue dogs, growing up with animals. I just, my dream is to own an animal sanctuary and rescue animals, a place where people and animals can come to heal. And we've talked about this and I just, I have such a strong connection with all living things. And when I brought this up the last time you were like, it's not so much that way with me. So can you, and I so respect that about you, your honesty and your integrity. And it's almost, well, I'll, I'll keep what I was going to say to myself, but I really respect your honesty. Can you kind of talk about why you're vegan? Like what it means to you and, and your purpose? Because it's not really about the animals for you. It's not about the planet. It's about ascension, isn't it? Well, that's the thing. I don't even call myself a vegan. You know, I'm more of a living food enthusiast for the results to cultivate, you know. Thanks so much for listening. If you'd like to check out Andrea Cox's most recent fourth book, Eat Right for Your Zodiac, it's the first book to ever combine astrology with plant-based eating. Andrea's Akashic Record Readings, Holistic Wellness Coaching, and Intuitive Life Coaching Services are sought out by both celebrities and ordinary, everyday people like Andrea herself. If you'd like to connect with her, you can find her at andreacox.com, on YouTube at both Andrea Cox TV and The Detox Intuitive, on Facebook at Andrea Lee Cox and on Instagram at Raw Chef Andrea. You might as well just put yourself in a prison, stop breathing and wait to die because you are imprisoning yourself. So I am, and even that's redundant. It's the I, the I of the I. So be the light, be the consciousness. And then you don't have to go, this is right, this is wrong. The Rumi has the greatest poem. Out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field. Meet me there. In other words, find the peace that goes beyond all the isms, all the religious uh, doctrines and theology, because the wisest masters took every religion, tried every single one. Ramakrishna did this. He had awakening and then he tried every single religion and took every single religion to the end and found the same. When you come to the end of any religious belief, you find the same truth. See, but what happens is, is people get caught in the isms, they get caught in the concepts and then they imprison themselves. And then they don't realize that they're the ones with the key that can put it in the lock and unlock themselves by taking off all the titles and just to be as you are, you know? So now, I'm gonna, ask you again. I, I'm gonna ask you again. So, but do you feel, because this isn't about like vegan or not vegan, do you feel a strong connection with animal life? Or is that's not what this is about at all? I know you, you feel a strong connection with all life, but taking out the spiritual sadhana portion of it, do you, do you feel a higher connection with animals because you don't put them on your plate? Not more than any, anything else. Okay. No. okay. I love animals, but not any more than I love touching the trees. When I went on a run today, I had my camera with me. So I went on a run with the camera and I saw these little lizards and I connected with them. I connected with the way they moved. And lizards I just, like, money, by the way, that's a lizards. sign of money. Lizards. Yeah. I saw a whole bunch of them. Yeah, and symbolism. money is flowing to me easily and effortlessly. It didn't at first, but then I learned the way of abundance and abundance consciousness and, and speaking, you know, and then thinking. And now it just flows to me like an overflowing because actually the more you open up and be generous, the more the door is wide open to receive. And so that's a pretty easy thing. And a lot of people have poverty consciousness and it's sad and they're going to take it out on you. But you know, I, God bless them with abundance too, that one day they may find the secret in their self-worth. 
So I'm a little bit different. I'm learning how to be more honest because I don't want to be politically correct and I don't want to kiss anyone's ass anymore. I'm just going to say it like it is because my teachers are the wisest sages and some of the great masters were vegetarian and some of them were uh, not. Yeah. And it didn't change the essence. It doesn't change the essence of who we are. I make personal choices to focus on the living foods because it really does work for me. I'm very thin. You know, if I ate animal products, maybe I'd be bigger. I don't know. But if I eat more um, vegan food and if I eat cooked food, I, it does stick on there a little bit more. And I have maybe 10 or 15 more pounds of weight on me. And maybe I look better to society. But I like the way I feel. I'm about one. Yes, you like the way you feel. I like the way I feel, and you feel. just a thin little guy. So you know, maybe a lot of women aren't attracted to that or whatever. I'm kind of getting over all that. But you know, when you're younger, you want it to be. So you try so hard, and you try so hard to fit into your little niche and be accepted by all your friends. And then you argue online, and you waste your whole life away Amen. because you should just find. I mean, that's what I'm saying is like, there's one answer to all problems, but you got to get on it. You've got to put out the effort starting right now, today, to find that inner peace and that stillness, which by the way, when I meditate, we never finished because I went on a tangent and then we went back to this other thing about the meditation. Um, my mantra is silence. So, and then that silences the mind because it goes all over in the place. And then you just say silence and then it learns and you train it like a little doggy and then it stops and then stillness. And so you, you silence the mind and you stillness the body. Then the Lotus of the heart blossoms. And then the presence of the beloved is right there in it's silence and it's stillness and it's infinite and it's vast and it's there's nothing there but it contains everything within it and it goes beyond duality and it's love it's the love of god and it's peace and it's ease and it's effortless and it's divine laziness and i can't wait to get into that state i've got obviously more work it's still running me like a little puppet on there and i'm like hi it's dan mcdonald i'm a little robot matrix robot but in the end, I'm looking for, that's why I'm just preparing with this simplicity because I can move out of this apartment in four hours. And now that I have a truck, I could probably do it in three, you know? So, and that's how I kind of need it to be, you know, cause I've moved so many times and I got sick of it. And then when I moved from Hawaii, I gave away about three quarters of my stuff, sold some of it. And then I have a little apartment there in Hawaii where all my stuff is just, just the cool stuff like this drum, I have one drum that I've been carrying around with me for 28 years. That's the one thing I've had more than any dog, cat, girlfriend, friend. That drum has been there with me. And so when I pull that drum out and people hear it, they know that I have a relationship with that drum and it sings my song and music is the only real way that I know how to truly express myself because words never really work. People get lost in the semantics. You mean you're not a militant vegan like me? F you, Dan McDonald. You know, it's like, hold on. You got to pull that tree stump. Well, out I have to say yeah. something. I have to, I have to interrupt you real quick. So I don't feel, and maybe it's just what you've been exposed to. I don't feel like there are a ton of militant vegans that the people I hang around with and the people that I've come into contact with, they just have a love of the animals. And that's, that's where I am. I, I am vegan because I I could look a lot better like you if I, you know, and, and build my muscles up and things, former fitness model, but I just have such a compassion and a connection with the animals and the symbolism that every animal brings, um, every animal that crosses my path, there's a hawk that has a nest in my tree. So there's two hawks that like frequent my, my tree outside. I'm like, Oh my God, that means I'm protected. And when my dog Roger passed away, an owl came every day for 30 days. And I knew that was the symbolism that he was about to pass away. And so animals represent such symbolic meaning in my life. Um, 
everything from birds, lizards, our, our abundance, things of that nature. And so I was just wondering if, if that was the same for you. And, and I actually thought it was fascinating that it wasn't on our first call. And, and I still have the same respect for you, even if you would say, oh, I love animals. I still feel the same about you. One thing I wanted to ask you is, do you feel you're a prophet? Do you, I know you don't see, maybe you do. I mean, because when I see you, like I literally see like a resemblance almost to what many people would say, like Jesus in some of your videos. I mean, you're really purifying the body on a cellular, cellular level. And that's why I ask about what the plant-based, the veganism, sorry about the ism, the raw foods, the living foods meant to you. I, I won't use the word vegan or veganism on my websites. I use the, the words living foods as well uh, for that same reason. But it's really about getting to source and getting back yourself, isn't it? Do you consider yourself a prophet? I mean, I could see why some people might say that. I mean, I basically brainwash myself several hours a day with the high consciousness, self-realization, kingdom of heaven is within, you know, teachings, you know, self-realization, enlightenment. Yeah. All, I don't even, I don't even watch anything anymore health related. You know, I, I still watch, you know, a couple things on politics just to make sure, you know, are the Chinese coming? You know, I need to have my bug out bag ready or what, but you know, um, do I need to go pick Andrea up and make sure your dogs are okay? Well, I got the, I got the truck. I'm going to mount the machine gun on there. But anyways, I have some billionaire friends that are like, you know, you might want to, here's what we, you know, I have a friend who owns the largest shipping port in China. And so he's like telling, giving me the inside intel, like China really wants your land, you know, and if things keep getting weaker in America, you may want to have your bug out bag ready. And he, it's even more intense than that. Like he moved his family to Uruguay, you know, so he's way on point, but that's why I'm ready to be mobile. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm out, you know, like, yeah. um, anyways, I'm not paranoid. I'm not really a prepper. Like I'm an inner prepper. I'm ready for anything. So, you know, um, so uh, not really just the truth is simple. It's in everyone. We, it's all, in, it's inside of us. It's just that those people I listen to are very divinely intelligent, have had the self-realization and I brainwash myself with their concepts. And then, um, you know, that just is an everyday part of my own personal thought process because I saw um, Health Rangers post today, Mike Adams, and he's like, the world is a bunch of retards. I haven't seen him forever. Wow. Uh, he got kicked off the internet, of course, but he's on Brighteon and he's got the the um, uh, situation update. And today's thing was, you know, humanity is totally screwed because of all the chemicals and stuff in the food. But the thing is, here I am getting stronger and healthier and more energized every day. So if I can do it, anyone can do it because I have no more intellectual energy, power, strength or you know, erudition than anybody else. I guarantee it. I'm so average. And yet the only thing about me is, is the, the main quality that I have is persistence. I'm a stubborn SOB. And even though I'll screw myself over and over and over and over again, I will get back up. I will dust myself off and I will keep going because there's just nothing else to do. You, there's no other, you can't stop. It's like, you're a fool if you stop, if you turn your back on the knowledge, if you make mistakes, they're stepping stones. If you turn your back on the knowledge, you're a fool. And so the world is full of fools who learned, wanted to learn because their ego thought, oh, this is great. This, this is gonna make me better. But the knowledge doesn't make you better. It's implementation and embodiment is what makes you better. People think that just because they've got a head full of garbage, some of the garbage is useful. At some point, though, it becomes nothing but waste matter because all you want to do is be present because that's where life is. That's the treasure is your childlike presence, moment to moment, paying attention to whatever it is you're doing, being into that at that moment, whether it's making love, making a sandwich, 
or taking a walk or going to sleep or meditating or whatever it is that you're doing to be there in that now, but with all the debris, you know, then you're just off everywhere. That's why the meditation can get you to just, you see that it's all just a phantasmagoria. You're enamored with your own thoughts. Oh, my thoughts are so thoughtful and so thinking this. Oh, I'm so smart. It makes me so special to have these thoughts. You are just hijacked and you're allowing it to happen because you get enamored of your own thinkingness. And that's the great downfall because then you leave the heart lotus and then you are just trapped up in all these concepts. And then if these people don't fit into your concepts, you put them in your little boxes and you're the superior one you're the ultimate ego of all egos. It's really delusional. And that's where most humans are these days. And it takes quite a bit to get out of that. You know, you I don't feel you, life. I feel you on that. I started a second YouTube channel a few years ago and I was just talking and talking that the spiritual channel and the videos were getting like crazy views in the beginning. And then I got bored with hearing myself talk and um, just, didn't want to really put the energy into it anymore. And it was it really still is really successful monetarily, but you get to a point where, and you and I had this discussion the other day, like I was telling you how I want to completely go offline. And, you know, if, if, if we didn't have to play this dance with monetary stuff and the balance, the delicate balance there that I would be offline, you know, and I think that I think that everyone's coming to that realization, but a lot of people don't grasp the concept that you hold, which is first elimination, not only in diet, but also in stuff like clearing out the clutter. Like you literally make me want to declutter my whole house. Like seeing your apartment was so inspiring and a lot of low vibrational people that have you know big mansions and things like that and are collecting the teslas would be like oh you know god that guy's broke or blah 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 i was like oh my god like i've got to have him over like i've got to make him dinner like this is amazing like oh my god he can help me declutter like i love this so i am really impressed and i also think there's a correlation with the the minimalistic lifestyle you live in the cleanliness of the body. Cause I know when I lived like you're living now around the age of 27, that was the cleanest my body ever was like yeah. it fails in comparison to now. And so that's something to strive for. And I, I want to talk about celibacy and you and I have had this discussion, how we leave a celibate lifestyle with, you know, pulling people in every, I, I like to joke and say, I take a lover once a decade, sometimes two, and that's about it. So what, what do you feel about the celibacy and what does that give to you? I know what it gives to me is a clear mind, more creativity and um, more mastery, self mastery in, in everyday life. What does it give to you? Uh, essentially that, you know, it is the creative life principle and there's many many layers to it um and so i start generally with the continence which is you know a man being with a woman but preserving his fluid which has got mechanical aspects to it plus if you are a continent with your woman you can make love to her eight or ten times a day she's walking around doing the dishes she's happy as heck and if you never release your seed, you're ready to go over and over. You're ready to do it all over and over. Then when you lose your seed, you're like, oh, it's okay. I'll talk to you in a couple of days, honey. You know, you want to just kind of have your space. And then once you've got to rebuild your polarity, then you'll want to merge with her again, depending upon your vitality, you know, how much you'll want to merge with your partner. So that's continence. Then there's celibacy which is, um, you know, no penetration or, um, you know, uh, you know, and then some people will be celibate, but they'll be masturbating. So then there's another level. And then some people are the brahmacharya, which is where there's just, you clear out your thoughts of sexuality, obviously you're celibate, but then you clean up the brain and eliminate 
uh, all of the sex thoughts themselves, which is one of the most powerful drives that takes place in the human brain and the human nervous system and the human reproductive system and the human endocrine system. It's all set up for the polarities of the masculine, the feminine, and it's just this whole, it's a universal thing. So again, let's go back to Rumi, out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field, I'll meet you there. You know, so whatever you do and whatever level you're at, um, you know, you want to bring the presence of the Lord into everything you do. And that's including making love and any kind of intimacy, which is good for human beings. And in the right situation, it's probably the most beautiful thing that is uh, possible on earth. Um, but generally we find that we haven't uh, evolved ourselves enough to truly be in an unconditional state so a lot of people, they're like, they roll out the scroll. Here's my demands. And then you're like, oh, you know, and then it just becomes this whole ownership. battle back and forth. Yeah. No, and ownership. Contract. Yeah. I, I have a question. Have you ever, because what you were talking about, the Barana Shami, I think, did I say it right? Um, sure. Okay. About clearing out the mind of all those thoughts. So in my years as a fitness model from like 25 to 34 um when i was celibate for over eight years celibate the thoughts were not there like i first of all i was so lean that i think i lost you know i wasn't having a menstrual cycle i was so lean that i did not have a menstrual cycle for eight years that's how lean i was um so the thoughts were not there so i do feel like i reached that state back then i'd actually like to go back to that state of uh living uh, as my spiritual sadhana of not um you know not interacting in that way i find that i know that men can be more creative i know this is a fact uh when they hold their seed right they can accomplish that yeah but I mean, women, 11 30 at night full of energy yeah, but Clearly. women, they say that women actually get benefit from having sex. I disagree. I think women lose this. I think women swallow a crazy seed once they sleep with a man because it's all about control then. It becomes about the woman, you know, wanting to control him and who he looks at and what he does and who is his ex. And, you know, it's just crazy, right? And everybody jokes and say, you know, says women are crazy. They are a little bit. Once they are intimate with a man, they become a different creature. And so for me, I think celibacy should really um, be part of a spiritual sadhana where you're really doing the, the work on earth to really set an example for others on how to live a clean lifestyle. So I, I just want to elaborate. What do you think the difference is? Do you think that sex is beneficial for women and not for men? Because a lot of people think that that practice celibacy. You know, I mean, it really depends on the consciousness that you bring to it. Unfortunately, we don't have schools for this and the rare individual, um, is going to be evolved enough to understand the biochemistry of lovemaking and not take it personally mm -hmm. and be able to maintain and control their own inner um, mechanisms, you know, in order to really be, you're gonna have the biochemistry. It's nature does it on purpose. And the man, you know, gets involved with the woman and then he's got the biochemistry set up to hang around for about three or four years to help get the child up to walking around and then he's off to go you know and the whole thing with the whole marriage and the whole society they're not going by the natural biochemistry so it's like that's why i've watched like i've studied apes monkeys bonobos chimpanzees and people will be like oh no 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 and i'll be like yes 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 i mean you know you just if you can and the homeboy He's usually chilling, big old silverback. He's got two, three, four honeys. He's got one or two favorites and the other two just chill around. But it's just what it is, you know what I'm saying? And, and instead, we, yeah, we live in a society where, you know, these 
that it's the men, the men are just shamed and they're like, oh, they cheated and they blah, blah. No, you're just, you haven't as a feminine evolved enough to look, I'm not into polyamory or anything like that. But as a feminine, a feminine needs to be evolved enough if she's going to entangle herself with a man and, and fall in love and be in that type to, to not, you know, constantly be attacking the woman on the street walking towards them that the man glances at or his ex-girlfriend or fiance or to, to be evolved enough to rise above that and really, you know, love herself enough. I think that's where we're lacking as women. There's not enough you know, really self love involved in all of this. Well, and I saying, you know, um, it doesn't matter where you work up your appetite as long as you come home to eat. And so the women, they take their man's balls, put them in a jar. And then when he's like this hen pecked little tofu burger, okay, yes, dear, you're not a man anymore. I know, honey, you put my balls in a jar, you know, and it just sucks, man. And so, but if you're like, wow, she's gorgeous. And then your wife says, yeah, she is gorgeous. Hello. You know, then you can celebrate beauty. And then guess what? Your husband's like, wow, you're a cool wife. You know, yeah. I'm like, I, I can't wait to go home and make love to you because you're really the one that gets me and we're friends. But she, but if she's like, how dare you look at anyone, you know, attacking it's, people online. Yeah. It's so petty. That's why the community doesn't work. That's why the relationships don't work. We're petty, but it's, it's human nature. But so there's rogues, there's men, and then there's angels, you know, and the angels can be, you know, a masculine man and take control and pull her hair when the time comes. But, you know, he can also be an angel and be like, I understand you're just a human being just like me. I've made those mistakes. You've made a mistake or or you did something and I have to deal with my feelings. I'm not going to blame you. This is my inner stuff or it's it's tough. Being human is not easy. And when it comes to the men and woman thing, it is not easy because of everything that's taking place in the shadow world inside of ourselves as biological beings as humans on earth programmed i mean there's so much there we're talking about coming from a little amoeba and everything that's happened with the fish and the lizard and then the little horsey and then the, everything and then now here we are you know it's like all that is happening is all back here in the back of our head you know and little programs sitting there waiting to be triggered by all the different phenomenon that are occurring internally and externally. So if people could cut everyone a break, if the vegans could cut a carnivores a break, and if the carnivores could cut the vegans a break, it'd be really great. And by the way, I was just really, really traumatized. It was one of the most traumatic experiences in my life by the vegans attacking me. And I want to know how you have like done deep tissue cleansing or with the way you eat or what have you to really clear that up and out? Like, how have you worked on yourself to move past the trauma? Because I think what people don't understand is we can go through things in life. And, I, and you just showed me a perfect example of how our trauma can come, it can come back up. It, we can be triggered at any point. It can come out I know with me, it came out for years. Like it's all I talked about in videos for years and years and years on the detox intuitive. Um, it's, it's all I talked about. So not on Andrea Cox TV, but on the detox intuitive and all I wrote about on social media. So how did you conquer that? Cause I know for me, it was just realizing that what I was dealing with, who I was dealing with was so low vibrational. And that in order to succeed and grow, I had to just move myself up and out of that experience. What really works is water fasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's the clearest, fastest, most potent, truest, you know, physio physiological, biological energy remover of all of the stagnation. The mm -hmm. stag energy. And I saw it. You can while you're having those cerebral detoxifications when you're deep into a water fast you're watching it you're just you're awake you're asleep 
and dreaming, but you're also awake at the same time, watching the brain be cleansed by the uh, by the removal of those bio memories that are get trapped. And when it's time for that layer to be eliminated, um, it's it's processed in that way. And it's interesting because when you are fasting, you can see it happening. And yeah. who it was and what the trauma was and you watch it and you have these little dreams about forgiving them and you're hanging out and everything's cool and you see it leaving your tissues mm, what's the longest i know i've done 21 days was my longest water fast at true north health center and i'm not allowed back there anymore because i was filming and they banned me from ever coming back what's the longest water fast you did Wow, they banned you for filming? Yeah, it was it was it was years ago before like Christina and everyone went there. I, I broke my foot and um, waddled in there with a boot cast on. I actually broke a few more rules too. I went and had a colonic, which you should never do, by the way. During a water fast, it can affect the myelin sheath, the nerve endings of the body. And I did one anyway. And I also um, ordered a rebounder from Amazon and had it delivered and was trying to rebound in my room and they don't want you to exercise. I like, yeah, I was not a good, but I was young and I was dumb and I didn't realize that during a water fast, you really should rest. Like I didn't realize that back then. Yeah. You finally figure that out later on and the fasting becomes far more efficient. So what's the longest uh, time you've water fasted? I did a 40 day water fast. Um, from May 1st, uh, 2018 to April 10th, 2018. And what was the biggest epiphany you had? Um, the, one of the greatest experiences was an out of body experience. And another one was a past life, uh, experience. Please talk about the past life experience, because that's what I talk about on the Detox Intuitive, the Akashic Records and all of that. Please talk about that. Well, I think it was like about day 40, or no, day 37. And um, I knew that it was coming to an end. And so I was praying. It was about 3.30 in the morning and I was wide awake. And I was just praying. And so I stood up and went out into the living room 3.30 in the morning, and I was saying, you know, what's next, God? What's next? You know, what do you want me to do after this? You know, what am I supposed to do now? And I went and sat on the floor and crossed my legs. And for the first time in my life, I went into a full lotus position. And instantaneously, I was transformed to another time, which was a past life experience uh, where I was a monk, an Asian monk with a bald head sitting on the floor i had a red robe and a yellow sash and i was meditating in this uh stone castle stone brick room with one candle burning and then i knew what that meant that meant it's time to start meditating and that's when i began to meditate every day for one hour a day at that time so that was one of the that was from that water fast, that was the greatest gift that I got was the one hour daily meditation at 5 a.m. in the morning. And I've been doing it every morning ever since that time from 5 to 6 a.m. And it's the best way to start the day. Dan, thank you for coming on. Thanks so much for listening. If you'd like to check out Andrea Cox's most recent fourth book, Eat Right for Your Zodiac, it's the first book to ever combine astrology with plant-based eating. Andrea's Akashic Record Readings, Holistic Wellness Coaching, and Intuitive Life Coaching Services are sought out by both celebrities and ordinary, everyday people like Andrea herself. If you'd like to connect with her, you can find her at andreacox.com, on YouTube at both Andrea Cox TV and The Detox Intuitive, on Facebook, at Andrea Lee Cox and on Instagram at Raw Chef Andrea.